Hey everyone, my name is Ashton August and this is Yoga for Complete Beginners. This class is geared towards the brand new yogi and we're going to be working through a series of common yoga poses that you'll find in a traditional yoga class so you can get comfortable and acclimated with the poses themselves as well as how to practice them safely and effectively. Now all you'll need for today's practice is some comfortable clothing, a yoga mat, and ideally two yoga blocks. If you don't have yoga blocks, that's okay. You can substitute two books that are about the same size or even grab a couple water bottles. We're just using these for support. And either way, I'll be here to show you how you can incorporate blocks into your own practice. This video has been made possible by Second Wind Health. I am practicing on their cork yoga mat and using their cork yoga blocks. If you'd like to learn more about these products, you can click on the link below. And when you're ready, let's get started. <music> All right, we are going to begin in Sukhasana, or easy seated pose. So in other words, we're just making our way to a comfortable seat, sitting cross-legged if that feels good in your body. Now, if you do have a yoga block or a book, you can go ahead and grab that and use that to prop it beneath your seat. Now, let's just take a few moments here to get settled and grounded. You're gonna gently rest your hands to your knees, roll your shoulders back and down and get nice and tall through the spine. Take a deep inhale breath with me. And with your exhale, we're just gently dropping our right ear to our right shoulder. Now notice if you're trying to bring your shoulder up to meet your ear, just relax your shoulder down and relax the right ear down. We're not forcing, we're just allowing this stretch. Now, as we move through our opening warm-ups for the body, I'll be speaking a little more on some of the key nuances of yoga for you to be aware of. Now, as I mentioned, this is called Sukhasana, or easy seated pose, the way we're sitting. And you'll notice that in yoga, we often use the Sanskrit names of poses. So with your inhale breath, we'll come through center. And with your exhale breath, left ear towards your left shoulder. Now, in Sanskrit, which is the traditional language of yoga, asana means pose. And so each pose name will end with asana. So Sukhasana is easy seated pose. Good. Your next breath will come up through center and let's warm up our wrists. So we're going to extend the arms out long, make a fist and just draw some nice circles with our wrists. It's really important to warm up your body in yoga and particularly our wrists because this is a small joint and we do a lot of weight bearing poses on it. Let's reverse the direction of the circles. Now, as you're moving here, really connect and pay attention to your breathing. So in yoga, we focus a lot on the breath and it's our opportunity to really check in with deep and conscious breathing. Let's come back through center and we're just gonna open and close our fists a few times. So nice, deep inhale, exhales. And you'll notice that I and many teachers will guide you on your breath as you move. And finally, let's bring our thumbs inside of the fist and we're going to make some circles once more. <sighs> let's reverse those circles. Good. And then we'll come back. We'll just shake those hands out. Nice job. Now let's move in to our next pose, which is tabletop pose. So if you do have a block or anything beneath you, let's go ahead and move that to the side. And now we're going to turn to face the front of our mats if we're not there already. Now setting yourself up for tabletop pose, you wanna start by stacking shoulder over elbow over wrist, and then take a look down at your hands. Really spread your fingers nice and wide here, and then grip the mat with each individual fingertip like you're gripping a basketball. Now from here, I want you to really feel the circumference or the outer perimeter of your palm pressing actively into the mat, so much so that the center of your palm begins to lift, pretending almost as if you're trying to keep a ladybug alive that's directly beneath your palm here. Now, we really wanna keep this awareness and activation through our hands because this is going to protect your wrist joint and really help you stay grounded and stable in these weight-bearing poses. All right, so from here, moving down your body, let's bring our awareness now to our low back. So really try to scoop your pelvis forward and see how that fills in my lower back. So you don't wanna dump into your back, you wanna have a nice neutral spine and a nice lightly engaged core. 
Now, finally, my knees are hip-width distance apart. My hips are stacked above my knees. And you want to release to the top of your feet if you're not there already. Okay, now that we have our tabletop set up, we're going to work into cat-cow pose. These are two poses that are usually linked together. So with your inhale breath, you're going to drop your stomach down, lift your tailbone, and lift your gaze up. Good. And then use your exhale breath to round into your spine, bringing your chin towards your chest. Good. Now let's work and move with our breath. Inhale, lengthen skyward. Gaze lifts, tailbone lifts, full inhale breath. And exhale, round into your spine, chin towards your chest. With every inhale, we're compressing the spinal column. Really good for our posture. And with every exhale, we're extending, we're lengthening the spine and creating space between each vertebra. Let's go for two more rounds here. Full inhale. Full exhale. Last time through. Ah. Mm. Very nice. Come back through center and you can just gently wag your hips side to side. Ha! Ah, feels good to move the body in that way. Now from here, we're getting ready for our next pose, which is downward facing dog or adho mukha svanasana. So it's a nice, easy setup from tabletop pose. In fact, I recommend that you come into your down dog from this tabletop position. So from here, all we're going to do is tuck our toes, and then as we straighten into our legs, send our hips up and back. Good. So you're working to make an upside down V shape with your body. Now take a few breaths here just to pedal out your feet, bend alternate knees. Just allow your body to get comfortable in this pose. Good, and now we're going to refine it a bit. So we're going to start with our feet. So you can send your gaze back towards your feet or you can watch me and then follow along when you're ready. But your heels are going to be stretching down towards the mat, but don't worry about getting them to touch down. You will gain the flexibility over time. So from here, bringing your awareness up to your knees, you wanna keep a nice micro bend in your knees. If that feels like too much pressure for you on your hamstrings, then you can bend your knees as deep as you need. From here, I want you to send your chest back towards your thighs as you keep your hips lifting up and back. Good. Now, remember the hand engagement that we talked about earlier. Keep your fingers spread wide. Keep your fingers pressing into the mat. And your gaze can be down at your big toes or maybe up towards your knees. But this means that we have a nice, gentle, relaxed head and neck. Good. Good. Now with your inhale breath, we're going to do one more little adjustment and then we'll take a break. So we're going to lift high onto the balls of our feet. We're going to bend our knees nice and deep here. Now from here, take an inhale breath as you send your booty towards the back of the mat. And now on your exhale, straighten into your legs. They don't have to be all the way straight, but you're gonna notice how that helps get our chests back towards the thighs a bit more and how that helps you feel nice and aligned in your downward dog. Good. Now with your next inhale, lift high onto the balls of the feet once more. And this time with your exhale, drop your knees all the way down to the mat. We're preparing now for child's pose. So we're going to bring our big toes to touch for this and slowly relax the seat down towards the heels. Now, if you have a block, here's a couple ways you can use it in your child's pose. Number one, we can place it beneath our forehead to help the mat lift up to meet us. So if your forehead's not touching all the way down, that's a nice way to utilize a block. And or you can send the block beneath your seat for a little added support and lift there as well. Now, wherever you are, just relax into this stretch. Child's pose or balasana is a gentle restorative posture. It's a nice lower back release. It's also a gentle hip opener. So if you're feeling this in your hips and you want to back off a little bit, you can always bring your knees a little closer together. And the opposite applies as well. If this is feeling like a nice juicy hip stretch and you'd like a little more, you can always take your knees a little wider. So in other words, as we mentioned in the beginning, yoga is all about finding what works for you and your body. It's a beautiful practice of tapping into your body awareness and knowing what you need 
what adjustments you can make, what modifications you can make to the pose to make it more accessible and feel better in your body. Good, let's take another few breaths here. Okay, now with your next breath, we're going to slowly come out of child's pose. And as a reminder, child's pose is a resting pose. So anytime you need to take a break during your yoga practice, that's a great place for you to come back to. If you had a block, let's go ahead and move that aside. We are going to incorporate it for our next pose, which is Sphinx pose. So we're going to slowly lower all the way down to the stomach as we extend our legs long. Now, if you have that block, we're going to grab it and place it between our hands. Sphinx pose is a baby backbend, so it's a perfect backbend to start in your yoga practice. If you have the block, we're going to place it between our hands as we align our forearms shoulder distance apart. Now, from here, I'm going to scooch, that's a technical term, my elbows back right underneath my shoulders. The bottom of your forearms are resting on the mat as are your hip bones, your thighs, your knees, and the top of your feet. Good. Now, from here, we're simply going to lift our heart, gently squeeze the shoulder blades together just to keep the heart lifted, and then send in your gaze just beyond the front of your mat. So you don't have to let your head hang all the way down. You don't have to look up or look around. Just a nice, gentle gaze to keep the spine and the neck nice and long. Nice deep breathing here. Try to soften through your glutes. This is a great beginner backbend for us. And this is a really good pose to help reverse any negative effects on our posture from sedentary lifestyles, AKA sitting in front of a computer or screens for long periods of time. So it might not feel super comfortable, but know that it's doing a lot of good for our posture. Let's take another deep inhale breath here. And exhale, let it go. Good, very nice. Now from here, if you do have a block, we're just gonna move it out of the way. And we're gonna slowly stack our forearms as we lower the forehead to rest on top of them. Here comes our payoff. We're gonna bend our knees and then windshield wiper the feet from side to side. Nice little low back release here. Make it feel good. <sighs> Awesome job. All right. Now let's come back through center. We're going to release the legs long and then zip the inner legs together like the tail of a cobra because we're moving into cobra pose or bhujangasana. So cobra is another back bend. And what we're going to do here is we're going to plant our palms directly beneath our shoulders, directly in line with our armpits. And I'm squeezing my elbows in towards the center of my body and I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together as well. Now to set ourselves up for this, we're going to relax the forehead down to the mat, take a deep inhale and exhale. Now with your inhale, press into the toenails, press into the thighs, press into the hips and lift your chin and chest off the mat as you send your gaze to the top of your mat. Keep squeezing your elbows and shoulders in together. Now with your inhale, see if you can lift a little higher. And with your exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Good, take an inhale and an exhale breath. And with your next inhale, we lift back into our baby cobra. Squeeze, press into the palms. Take another breath here, inhale. And exhale, release. Very nice. Final time, you have the option to take one more baby cobra or with your inhale breath, we can lift and press into full cobra pose. Now my elbows are still hugging into my side body. I'm squeezing my shoulder blades. The difference is now I have lifted my chest off the mat as well for three, two, and one. I slowly lower down and then we'll bring our big toes to touch as we press back to take a few deep breaths. Ah, in child's pose. Great work. Let's go for one more breath here. Ah, all right. We're ready to move on. So from here, we're just going to lift our gaze and come back to our tabletop position. 
So we're preparing for low lunge pose or Anjanasana. So for this, we're going to start by stepping our right foot forward. So step your foot up and you might need to help it get all the way forward, so that's okay. Now, once you have the position, this is what it's going to look like. If you have blocks, this is a great time to grab them and frame your front foot. So what's great about using blocks for our practice is that you can adjust them according to what you need. So for me, this is a great height today. This is helping bring the floor up to meet me. Now, if I needed a little more, I could turn the blocks on the taller height and reverse goes as well if I didn't need quite so much. So if you have your blocks and you're working with them, find the height and the position that works for you. <sighs> Wherever you are, nice deep breathing. <sighs> Good. One more breath in your low lunge. And then from here, preparing to take our high lunge or alanasana, we're going to tuck our back left toes and straighten our back left leg. Good. Now, with your inhale breath, we're going to lift our arms up overhead, coming into that full expression of the pose. Now, what I want here is my knee to be stacked directly over my ankle on my front leg. Good. You can always back out of that, meaning if you need to bring the knee further back towards your body, that's fine. What we don't want to see, though, is the knee extending beyond the ankle. This puts a lot of unnecessary pressure and risk into that front knee joint. So find that leg position that works for you. And then as you gently scoop the pelvis forward, notice your back leg. You can keep it straight and strong, or it might feel better to bring a micro bend into that back knee. Wherever you are, try to pull your biceps back by your ears here. Spiral your pinkies inward to keep your arms active and engaged. Take another breath. And with your exhale, we're going to bring our hands down, move your blocks out of the way if you have them, and then plant your back left knee and step yourself back to tabletop pose. Great job. We're moving directly into our side two. So left foot steps forward. And again, if it can't step all the way forward yet, that's okay. Help yourself get all the way there. Okay. Now on side two, grab your blocks if you'd like them. I'm going to show you what it looks like without blocks. So your choice here. You can even lift a little higher and take some weight out of your hands. <sighs> Good. Reminder to check in with your deep, steady breathing here. Very nice. And with your next breath, we're going to tuck our back right toes and straighten into our back right leg. Good. Now take a moment here, engage your glutes. Really press your inner thighs towards each other like you're trying to squeeze a giant beach ball and that's going to help you find your stability and your grounding in order to lift your arms up overhead with control. Now don't be afraid to make any micro adjustments that you need to just as I did here. Now, settle in once more, check in with your front knee. Again, ultimately we want it stacked over our front ankle. If that's not available for you yet and you're more so back here, completely fine. Again, the only thing we don't wanna see is knee jutting past the ankle. Sinking down low, micro bend into your back right knee if that feels better for you keeping your arms active. Now, another thing I want you to bring awareness to is your rib cage. What I often see is this, lots of hearts jutting open, and what's happening here is I'm blowing out through the rib cage. So instead, what I wanna do is knit my rib cage together and really compress through the core here, and what this is doing is giving you a nice, stable foundation so you feel grounded and firm in this pose. All right, so let's take one more breath here. Good, and we're coming out of this pose a different way here on side two. So bring your hands to your hips, and then slowly we're just going to step our back foot up to meet the front. Good, we're coming into chair pose, so you can stay where you are. I'm going to turn to face you. So for chair pose today, we are going to take our feet hip width distance apart. Now as you're ready, we're going to bend deeply into our knees as we sweep our arms up overhead. 
Good. Now let's build this pose from the ground up. Bring the weight into your heels, so much so that you can lift and wiggle your toes. Nice. Now from here, your knees are pressing gently outward, so they're aligned with the outer blade of your feet, so no knees caving inward like so. Keep them strong and engaged. Feel like you have a resistance band around your thighs that you're gently pressing out and against. Good. Now you're going to stick your booty out as you lift your heart and then arms up overhead. Good. This is a challenging posture, Utkatasana, chair pose, everyone's favorite pose, but we are going to breathe our way through it. If this is too much for your shoulders, you can always take your arms shoulder distance apart. Instead, even bringing hands to heart center is totally fine. Again, find the option that works best for your body. We're going to take one more breath here. Smiling helps. <laughs> Good. With your inhale, let's come all the way up to standing, arms up overhead, and exhale. <sighs> Hands through heart center. Great work. I'm going to turn to face the front of the mat and join you there. Now from here, we're going to guide our hands up overhead with an inhale breath. And this time with your exhale, swan dive. As we forward fold, you bring your arms out to a T and hinge. <sighs> At the bottom of this fold, simply let your head hang heavy. And in fact, we're going to shake our head yes and shake our heads no. You can bend your knees as much as you need to to get your hands to touch down. If you have a block, you can always rest your hands to that block if you would like. But we're just going to take a few breaths here. <sighs> Breathing into this hamstring stretch. Now you're doing so good in this video. As a reminder, you can always pause the video if you need to take a break or if you need to back up and follow along with me after you watch. Let's just take one more breath here. Good. And then with your next inhale, we're going to straighten into our legs and press our hands either into our shins or thighs, whatever feels better for you, taking a halfway lift. And with your exhale, fold, Uttanasana. And with your inhale, let's just roll up slow. One vertebra at a time, come all the way up. Ah, inhale your arms up overhead. And this time we'll exhale, guiding our hands to our hips. Good. Now we're going to work through our warriors. We're going to practice warrior one and two today. Let's begin with warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. Hands to your hips. What we're going to do from here is keep the right foot forward and take a big forefoot step back with our left foot. So stepping it all the way back and then pivoting onto the back heel. Now, just like when we were stepping our foot forward, if you can only step back this far, that's okay. Step back, step back again, and find that position for yourself. Now in warrior one, we want our hips squared towards the front of the mat. In other words, if each hip bone were the headlight of a car, they would both be shining directly forward. So for many of us, including myself, what this means is that we might have to step our back left foot out to the side a little bit more in order to allow that rotation through the hips. So play around with that, figure out what works in your body, and then as you're ready, boop, you'll find that positioning with your hips shining directly forward. Same thing with our legs as we discussed in the lunges. Now my knee can be back, or ultimately it's going to stack over the ankle. And again, we just never want it to go beyond. So find that position for yourself. Now, final thing about the legs. We want our back left leg straight and strong. I'm pressing my body weight down and out through the outer blade of my back foot. And this is giving me a nice solid firm foundation. As you're ready from here, take your arms up overhead and breathe into your warrior one pose. Good. We're taking one final breath here. Excellent job to come out of it. We're going to exit the same way we came in. Hands to our hips, pivot onto the ball of your back foot, and then step your left foot forward. Awesome job. Let's go for side two. So left foot stays forward. Right foot takes a big forefoot step back. 
pivoting onto the outer blade of your back foot so that back foot is planted. Good, now test out your hip bones, see if they can shine forward like those headlights, and once more again, if you're not quite there yet, that's okay, step your back foot out a little bit more. Bending into your front knee, and as you're ready, let's take our arms up overhead. So remembering the lower body alignment here, from here, let's gently scoop the pelvis forward as we engage our core. My biceps are back by my ears. My shoulders, though, are relaxed. So what often happens is we're not paying attention and our shoulders hunch up around our ears. So if you notice that, no big deal, just pull your shoulder blades down. <sighs> that feels better. Good. Now spiral your pinkies inward. This keeps my arms active and engaged. No noodle arms here. Active through our arms. And breathe like the strong warriors we are. Awesome job. Now from here, let's bring our hands to our hips, pivot onto the ball of the back foot, and step your right foot forward. Let's take our arms up overhead. Inhale, breath, Utita Hastasana. Exhale, forward fold or Uttanasana. Find your halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, plant your palms and step yourself back to downward facing dog. Ha, take a deep inhale breath. This time, open your mouth and sigh it out. <sighs> Let's do one more. Inhale. And exhale. <sighs> Good. Now we're going to prepare for our warrior two now. So we're going to access it from a different way as we did warrior one. So notice which access point is easier for you. So from our downward dog position, we're going to look forward and we're going to step the right foot forward. Again, help yourself get there. And then we're going to pivot our back heel down. Now, before we lift our arms, you basically want to make one straight line from your front heel down to the inner arch of your back foot. Now, if you're practicing on a mat that has alignment markers like this mat does, it helps to be able to line it up down the center. And if not, no worries, just draw that imaginary line for yourself. And with your inhale breath, let's windmill the arms up and come into a nice warrior two position. Good. Now warrior two, my front knee is stacked above my ankle or before it. Good. My front heel is in line with the center arch of my back foot. Now my back foot feels as if I'm trying to open a jar of pickles forward. So I've got a really active foot here. This is for my grounding and stability. Ha! <sighs> now from here, send your gaze powerfully over your front fingertips and breathe in your warrior stance. One more breath. You're doing so good. Awesome job. Let's windmill our hands back down to the mat. We're going to pop onto the ball of our back left foot and then we'll step our right foot back to downward facing dog. Take a deep inhale breath with me. Take an open mouth sigh. <sighs> and let's get ready for our side two. So now our left foot steps forward, help it get all the way forward, land your foot right in the center of your mat so we can pivot our back heel down and align our front ankle and heel with the center arch of our back foot. Now, as you're ready, windmill the arms up. And if you wanted a little extra support getting up, press your forearm into your thigh and then take your arms up overhead. Good, so now you get to see what this pose looks like from the back. Settling into the legs, keeping that action through the back right foot. Now let's focus on our upper body. So pretend as if you're pressing your arms down onto a table behind you. Active, strong arms. Also, try to get your arms level here. So arms making one long line. And finally, we send our gaze over the front fingertips. If that's a lot for your neck, no worries there. You can always send your gaze directly in front of your body. Three deep breaths wherever you are. And final breath here. 
All right. Now from here, we're going to transition into a wide leg forward fold. So from where you are, all you're doing is taking your front left foot and turning it in the same direction as your right foot. For star pose, we make the shape of a star. Arms up overhead. Good, my toes are slightly turned inward to help me prevent from slipping. Now, from our star pose, we're going to bring our arms out to a T. Now you stay where you are, I'm just gonna turn to face you. And from here, we're going to slowly hinge from the hips, guiding the hands down beneath the shoulders as we come into a nice wide leg forward fold. So if you feel like you're slipping at all, try to turn your toes in a bit to help you. And then my head hangs nice and heavy. So once again, you can shake your head yes and shake your head no. And you can stay right here. Or if you'd like to add a shoulder stretch, you can interlace your fingers behind your back and let your arms hang up and overhead. Your choice here, whatever feels good in your body. Three deep breaths. So good. Now if you have your fingers interlaced, let's release those down to the mat. And let's all take a nice little halfway lift. Inhale, breath. <sighs> all right, now let's all turn all 10 toes to face the front of the mat. And we'll just step our back foot forward, coming into another forward fold. Good. And with your inhale breath, let's round up slow all the way to the top, guiding our arms up overhead and guiding hands to heart center. <sighs> All right, now I'm going to turn and face you for this next pose. You can stay where you are, or you can move to a wall or to a piece of furniture like a chair or the back of a couch because we're going to be working in to tree pose. So tree pose is a fun balancing posture and there are several levels of how we can practice this pose. So I'll show you in the center of the mat. And again, if you decide that you need help with your balance, you can always use a wall or a piece of furniture to set your hand on. So for tree pose, we're going to ground down through our right foot. Now from here, hands to your hips, we've got options and try these with me and decide which is best for you. Option one, we can bring our left foot to our inner right ankle, almost like a kickstand. This is a perfect place to begin if you are working on establishing balance. So if you're feeling a little wobbly, stay right here. And then just focus on gently opening your left knee. Good, so you have a nice little open rotation through your hip. This can also be done while holding a chair or while pressing your hand against a wall for added support. Good. Now, if you'd like to try lifting the foot off the mat, let's try pressing our foot into our inner right calf. Now, same thing here. We're going to gently press the left knee open. Now, another thing I wanna bring your awareness to is your tailbone. Don't duck butt here, resist the urge to stick your butt out, and instead slightly scoop your pelvis forward, and that's going to help you engage your low core and keep your balance here. Now, final expression we can play with, if you would like, is guiding your left foot to your right inner thigh. Now, if you're here, same thing, press your left knee open, and just be very aware that your foot is above your knee. I'm a big stickler for this, so no foot on your knee joint. Let's either bring it above or below to keep the knee safe. Good, so less talking, let's feel this pose. Hands can stay on your hips, or we can take our arms up overhead. Breathe. And slowly, we'll release hands back to your hips and relax your left foot down. Shake out the right leg, it just did a lot of work. All right, let's prepare for our side two. Again, this can be done up against a wall or with a piece of furniture for support. We're going to ground down through all four corners of your left standing foot. So really feel a firm foundation here. Just like our active hands in the beginning of class, same thing with a foot. A nice active foot will help you feel grounded and rooted. Hands back to your hips. And a quick refresher of our options. We can give ourselves a kickstand with our inner left ankle. We can bring the foot up if we're ready to balance to our inner left calf. 
Now you always want to avoid the knee joint so you can stay here with your foot beneath the knee or if you wanted to take it all the way up, you can rest it to your left inner thigh above the knee joint. Good. Now, wherever you choose to stay on this side, find a drishti. So in yoga class, you might hear this word come up. Drishti means a point of focus to set your gaze on. So something that's not moving in front of you, find a couch, a chair, a painting, something to set your gaze on, and this will help you keep your balance. Take your arms up overhead if you'd like and when you're ready. Very nice. All right, when you're ready, hands back to your hips. We'll release the right foot down and we'll shake the left leg out. Great work. It's all downhill from here, all smooth sailing. So for our next pose, if you have a block, we're going to grab it. This is Malasana or Yogi Squat. So making your way to the front of your mat, what we're going to do here is bring our heels in and toes out and my feet are almost as wide as the mat. So it's a pretty wide stance, wider than my hips. And from here, we'll begin to lower all the way down. Now, if you have a block, what we're gonna do with that block is we're going to prop it directly beneath our seat. Good. Now, Malasana is called a yogi squat and it is a deep hip opener. So if pressing your elbows against your knees is too intense, then just take the press out of it. Good, if you are ready for a little hip opener, you can actively press elbows against knees. But by using a block beneath the seat, we're able to get this lift in the heart while keeping our heels planted. So if you don't have a block, our malasana will look like this. However, if that's not accessible to you yet, no worries at all. Malasana is a working posture, meaning we build into it over time. So if you need to be up here, that's totally fine. What we're working on is keeping our heels planted to the mat. So wherever we need to be for that, we're going to stay for one more breath. Very nice. Good. Now from here to come out of it, we're going to simply plant our palms and straighten our heels out behind us, toes forward into a nice forward fold. Ah. All right. Now from here, let's heel to our feet together, lifting high onto the balls of the feet and bringing our seat down to our heels like a little roly poly. You can round in and take a breath. Hmm. And then we'll slowly relax onto our seat. We're preparing for bridge pose. Now bridge pose is a wonderful pose to do with a yoga block. So I'm gonna grab it. If you have yours, grab it too. And so for bridge pose, we are going to come down onto our backs and we're going to start by bringing our feet hip width distance apart and bringing the heels close enough to our hands so that we're able to touch the heels. Good. Now from here, we're going to lift the hips towards the sky as we press our shoulder blades into the mat. Now, if you have a block, let's grab that block and we're going to place it directly beneath our tailbone. So this triangular part of the sacrum of our lowest part of the lumbar spine, we're going to rest that on the block and allow the very tip of our tailbone to hang off the edge of the block. So in other words, you're able to flatten your low back onto the block and rest here. Good. Now we're going to keep our forearms planted on the mat. And if you don't have a block, let's lower the hips all the way down to the mat here. Now bridge pose is a lovely strengthening posture. So with your inhale, we're going to lift our hips towards the sky. And with your exhale, lower down to the block or the mat. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Last time, here we go. Inhale, lift. We're gonna hold at the top. Again, feeling like we have a resistance band around our thighs. So we're pressing our thighs outward, keeping them in line with the knees, keeping our legs strong and engaged for three, for two, 
and one, lowering down one vertebra at a time until your low back finds the block or the mat once more. Now this time I want you to heel toe your feet out towards the edges of the mat and allow your knees to cave in and meet in the center. Take a few breaths here. <sighs> Good. Let's take one more breath here. All right. And then we will bring the knees back to center, heel toe the feet back to hip distance apart, and then lift your hips. If you have a block, we're going to slide it out from underneath us and lowering all the way down. We're going to hug our knees into our chest and give ourselves a great big hug so you can wrap your forearms around your shins. <sighs> all right. We're going to end our practice today with happy baby. So from here, we're going to grab the inner or outer blades of the feet, and we're going to pull the thighs down towards the mat. Now, you can choose to stay here in a static pose, or you can gently rock side to side, massaging out the pressure points all around the tailbone here. <sighs> good. Happy baby is a feel-good pose. So make it feel good. Explore with different variations, maybe straightening into alternate legs, maybe pulling your thighs down a little closer towards the mat. Wherever you are, take a few more breaths. Enjoy. <sighs> Very good. And then as you're ready, we'll hug both of our knees into our chest one more time. One last great big hug. Show yourself some love for stepping onto your mat today and for beginning your yoga journey. Take a deep inhale breath. And with your exhale, we're going to extend our legs long, reach our arms up overhead, reaching through our fingers, pointing through our toes. Stretch, stretch, stretch. And then when you're ready, we'll guide our arms down by our sides. You can let the feet Relax heavy out to the side, and we're going to take a few moments in our final resting pose, or Shavasana. So Shavasana is practiced at the end of your yoga. It is a way for the body to recalibrate and to absorb all the healing, strengthening benefits of our practice. And so in other words, Shavasana is one of the most important poses we can do. And so all you need to do is relax your body. Let your feet relax heavy out to the sides. Soften through your hips and your low back. Relax the stomach. Shrug the shoulders down away from your ears. Soften your jaw. Soften your forehead. And if you feel comfortable here, you can close your eyes. Let everything go. We'll be here for just a moment together, and then I'll guide you out. your next breath, gently begin to deepen your breathing. Gently begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. And gently guide your knees back into your chest. <sighs> Good. Now we're going to bring the right arm up overhead as you gently rock onto your right side. Take a final moment here. Your gaze is soft or your eyes can remain closed. And then using your free hand, 
Gently press yourself up to seated. Softly open your eyes as you're ready. And with your inhale breath, we're going to take our arms up overhead, guide our hands to our hearts, and to seal our yoga practice, we say, Namaste. Which means the light in me honors the light in you. Thank you so much for joining me in our Yoga for Beginners class today. Remember that you can revisit this video as often as you would like, and as a newer yogi, I encourage you to do that. So keep coming back to the video, keep learning, keep exploring, and I can't wait for you to see all the amazing benefits that this practice has for you. Thank you so much again for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video.